In the book of Matthew, chapter number 14, if you're able, if you're willing, can you stand with us this morning? I'll try to be as brief as I can. I promise you it's not a 15-minute message. Uh, my wife gave me 20, and so I usually take 40 or 45 when she does that. And uh, But uh, I'll, I'll be just as brief as I can this morning, but still give you that that the Lord has laid on our heart. We'll begin reading in verse number 22. Now you, uh, you know the, the story here. You know where, uh, where they've came from. We know that in the prior verses, John has been beheaded. And uh, then uh, there's been one of the greatest miracles that's uh, ever been performed uh, that has happened just prior to our reading this morning. Uh, we've, uh, we know that uh, the 5,000 plus the women, plus the children, uh, were fed. And uh, what a miracle that was. Uh, but God's still in the business this morning. Yeah, amen. And uh, I, I want to uh, I want to share with you a thought that the Lord gave me many years ago and uh, that has helped me through the years in tough times. Verse number 22, the Bible said, In straightway, now that word straightway, Noah Webster says it means without loss of time. Yeah. I believe the Lord meant for him to get busy in doing what he told him to do. Amen. The Bible said in straightway Jesus constrained that word constrained. Now I'm a I'm a stickler for words. Yeah. Yeah. Do you well when you're studying to stop and find out what that word means. It uh, that word constrained means urged or compelled irresistibly. Right. He wasn't taking no for an answer. Right. He's told his disciples how uh, to get in a ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when they had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And the he when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship, and you'll have to forgive me, I have some medicine that I take that just dries my mouth out to a ball of cotton, and I just have to stop and drink, or I'll be spitting cotton, Amen. But the ship, in verse number 24, was now, and that ship is a picture of the church. Right. Keep that in your mind as we go through these scriptures today. Was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves. The sea is a picture of the world. Mm -hmm. And the wind, for the wind, uh, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when, his, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord... If it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and he called him, and said unto him, Now listen to what the scripture says here. O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Verse number 33 said, Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. And Lord Master, I thank you for another opportunity to stand in this place. Lord, uh, in your pulpit, preach your word. And Lord, I ask you, God, for a little while, you'd help us to preach with power. And Lord, demonstration, God of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, dear God, I ask you, Father, that you would help me, God, as I stand in this place, to not embarrass you, but lift up your name. Amen. Father, we ask you, God, that you would touch every soul that's in this building today. Something would be said that would help somebody. 
before we leave this place. Bless, Lord, the time of invitation, and we'll praise you, and thank you for everything you do. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. You can be seated. The Bible, if you don't understand, if you don't get a hold of verse number 22 this morning, you'll not understand what I'm preaching. The Bible said here in straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. The Lord's given direction. Oftentimes, the Lord gives us direction and we don't pay good attention. And the Lord tells us to do something, his word is settled. I've read this thing cover to cover many, many times. And every time I read it, this very Bible itself, every time I read it, I don't find anything's changed. Right, right. Now there's things that I see that I didn't see before, sure. but God's Word didn't change. God don't change His mind too often. There was a time we'd go back into the Old Testament and find where God uh, did uh, 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 say, uh, make a statement and the word is leaving me right now so I'll not try to to to, to uh, uh, run down that that rabbit trail too far but but God uh, but God will back up and give us another opportunity that does not mean that he's changing his mind right. it just means that he is understanding that we're flesh right. but when God tells us to do something he expects us to do it I'm preaching on this thought this morning, uh, staying put in the storm. Wow. Oftentimes when the winds begin to, to blow and things begin to uh, uh, go as they're going in these scriptures, we begin to want to find a place to run. We want to find a place to go and find the easier way. The old saying goes, uh, the grass is greener on the other side. Well, I, by trade, I'm a plumber. And what I found out is you begin to find green grass, you might not like what's under the grass, amen. Right. And so you might ought to be careful how you jump the fence and take off. Right. Now, I know, and we've all heard it preached, I've preached it myself, uh, what a man of faith Peter was. Mm -hmm. How he stepped out of that boat onto the, and began to walk on the water. Well, what I have found through the years is God has, has given me this. And I listen, if you don't agree with me, it's all right. Uh, everybody's got opinions, and you have a right to be wrong. Where's our teacher brother at from, uh, from, uh, uh, from Sunday? There he is, amen. Uh, I, I did mean to say, God, God bless you, brother. I enjoyed the Sunday school. One of the, one of the, the, the hardest things, and we were in full-time service for many years, one of the hardest things and one of the biggest things that we dreaded is going into church on Sunday morning for Sunday school because you'd never know what you was going to get. Amen. But I thank God for Sunday school this morning. It was good. I appreciate the teaching. Uh, but, but let me say we, we, we all can have our opinions and I understand there is a reason why we can preach these scriptures uh, in different directions. But I want to say this morning I believe Peter when he stepped out of the boat he stepped out of the place where the Lord put him to begin with and he should have stepped in the boat and trusted God. The Bible didn't tell him to get halfway out in the into the Sea of Tiberias and 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 step out and walk up. But the the Lord told him to get in the boat and go to the other side. Right. Now, I, I want to say this morning, too often times we, as Christians, we as God's people, uh, things gets a little rough in the church house. And, uh, and, and the preacher may be preaching a little straighter than we like it. And, and, then, and then maybe it's just a storm that arises and, and, and things get a, a, a little hard uh, uh, down at the house. And, and we'll, we'll have tendency uh, uh, to blame it on other things. Uh, uh, when in fact, uh, it's us. We're not paying attention to God. Uh, and, uh, and we need to just go ahead, uh, uh, fall in line, and follow after what he's got for us to do. Amen. 
And and so what I'm saying this morning, when things uh, I begin to get tough, be sure you're where you belong at and go ahead and just stick with it for a little while, all right? Verse number 23, the Bible said, when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain. Boy, what a joy it was to know. Uh, it had to be a joy uh, to know as one of those disciples, they're about to take a trip. They've got no idea what's going on. Uh, uh, they've got no idea that there's a storm in front of them. They've got no idea that the wind is fixing to pick up and things is fixing to get rough. Uh, uh, but, but, but the Lord, he's in the mountain and he's praying for them. Right. Boy, ain't it good to know this morning the Lord's on our side? Yeah. Ain't it good to know this morning that he is still uh, uh, got us in the palm of his hand? Uh, if you know him, if you put your faith in him, he's got a place you out in that big old palm just for you. Uh, and if you're there, and if you're hanging on, uh, now I want to tell you, I normally have uh, uh, Dr. Raymond Sorrells, one of my Bible college uh, uh, professors, he taught us to write our message out uh, and to stay with it. And when that thing got high, to quit. And I never did learn none of that, Brother Doug. Uh, I tried. Uh, I do normally have an outline, but I don't have an outline this morning. Uh, I, I, I normally try to write it out as best as I can. Uh, uh, but I usually can't follow it. Uh, so I'm just trusting God this morning uh, uh, to give us what we need for a little while. Uh, uh, this morning, uh, I, I'm thankful that he's watching over me from where he's at. Uh, I'm thankful that he knows my every move. Uh, I'm thankful this morning that he knows uh, uh, when I'm in trouble, uh, uh, when I'm getting to the place uh, uh, that I'm not uh, doing exactly what I need to be doing, uh, uh, that he can yank my chain uh, yeah. Y'all hang on a minute. Yeah. He can yank my chain and let me know that I've stepped aside and I need to get back where I belong. Yeah. Yeah. There was many years of my life that every time a little storm come up, I'd run. I was in a place. I was associate pastor and youth pastor at church in Tennessee back some that's been nearing 20 years ago now. And, and, and it got tough things begin to happen and I, that I didn't understand and 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 the Lord had been blessing I I was telling I was telling brother Doug yesterday about how we had haul in uh, uh, 25 to 28 sometimes 30 youngins on a 15 passenger van I mean the God was saving God was blessing and the devil began to get in the middle of that thing and I and I didn't like it a little bit I crawled off over there in my corner and I said Lord uh, if you'll give me permission I'll get out of here. I'll take my family and I'll go back to Alabama. I'll put all this behind me uh, and I'll do whatever you want me to do down there. When in fact, I was where God had put me to begin with. Yeah. Can I say this morning, uh, and I know I'm not telling you nothing new uh, uh, with, the, with the man of God that you've got, uh, uh, but can I tell you this morning uh, uh, that there's two kinds of storms. There's a storm of correction and there is a storm of perfection and, uh, and there is uh, two types of his will you can be in his perfect will uh, or you can be in his permissive will uh, I was in his perfect will uh, I was where he had put me at uh, I was doing what he had told me to do uh, and then the, the devil began to pop his head up uh, and, uh, and, and immediately I decided I didn't like what was going on uh, uh, things had been good uh, uh, things was uh, uh, moving right along and then uh, all of a sudden it began to turn upside down and I didn't want to have to fight that fight again I, I said God get me out of here and when he gave me permission you know what happened I went from being in the perfect wheel to in his permissive wheel and I want to tell you something I just thought I was in a storm the next several months the storm showed itself it showed itself in many ways it began to show itself financially in the back home boy it took a long time a lot of praying and a lot of begging and a lot, a lot of God uh, having to deal with my heart and me saying God I'm sorry I'm not going down that road again and I'll tell you I've seen some fights since then but I've gotten to the place that I'm not scared of the fight 
I'm not scared of the storm because I've realized who the eye of the storm is. Oh, yeah. And as long as we hang with him, yeah. the, the, the hurricanes, the tornadoes, and, and you know, they, they say, I, I'm thankful I have never had to ride out a hurricane, but boy, I tell you, I've seen a few tornadoes uh, uh, living in Tornado Alley in North Alabama. But they say that hurricane, uh, uh, the most still place there is in that hurricane is when that eye of the storm passes by. Well, I'm thankful uh, uh, that he is the eye of the storm. Uh, and if I just hang with him, he'll walk me through the storm. Uh, hey, uh, I say this morning, verse number 24, uh, uh, the Bible said that the ship uh, uh, was in the midst of the sea, tossed uh, uh, with the waves, for the waves are contrary. Uh, uh, we're living in a time where the church is in a mess. Uh, uh, the church uh, as a whole around the world, uh, they're in messes. Amen. Uh, uh, we got Baptist folk that can't get along with their uh, with uh, with like-minded Baptist folk. Uh, uh, we got folks uh, uh, that's fussing and raising it. Uh, uh, cane about uh, a song being sung. Uh, it's got to the place that we've got to do a, a, a background check on the writer. Uh, uh, it's came that we we need to do a. Uh, uh, we need to be sure we check uh, uh, with the, the the music professionals uh, in order to be able to sing a song to make sure it's got the right beat. Uh, I say it's time uh, uh, that God's people come together and realize uh, uh, that it's about Him. It's not about us. And you're right, brother. It's not about our opinion. Uh, it's about what God's got to say about the situation. Yes, sir. He said the ship was in the midst of the sea. If there's a time that our churches should be following after what the Lord has laid out for us to do, we have a plan. Do you understand that? Our plan, the plan that God has got for our lives as the church is not to be fussing with each other. It's not to be running each other down on Facebook. It's, it's not about all of that. It's about, it's about going to St. Lucia yeah, right. and telling people that don't know him about him. Right. It's about going across the street over yonder. Yeah. And, and, and if they don't have no confidence, if they see us on social media showing out and, 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 and all of these other things, why should they have any confidence in us? Right, right. Good. Good. Verse number 25. And I'm hurrying this morning. The Bible said in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Fourth watch. The first watch was dark to around nine o'clock. Second, nine to twelve. Third, somewhere around twelve to three. And in that fourth watch of the night, it's somewhere around 3 o'clock to daylight. Darkest part of the night. And I don't know, some of you probably don't even know 3 o'clock comes twice on the clock in a day's time. But I've seen it pass a time or two. And I've walked out on the porch and look around. And where I grew up at, there wasn't a whole lot of street lights. And wasn't a whole lot of, lot of places. Wasn't a whole lot of light, period. And on a, on a dark night when the clouds had have the moon covered, that third watch, that three o'clock time come, and you couldn't hardly even see your hand in front of your face. And the storms are brewing. Things begin to happen that third watch of the night things was tough on that sea that thing was about 11 miles wide I think I'm telling it right preacher somewhere between 10 and 11 miles they had been rowing since, since about dark time and they would made it about halfway across this thing winds blowing and I could just imagine the conversation that's going on between those disciples. I mean, we got cussing Peter and we got doubting Thomas. And we, got, uh, we got all these other disciples and they just like a bunch of Baptists. They can't get along no way. And 
troubles and trials going on and now the storms hit how many times have we through our lifetime seen this side of the church over here can't get along with this side of the church This disciple's not rowing hard enough, and this one's rowing too hard. And I don't know about y'all, but I grew up in a time where we, if we if we done any boating on the river, we done it with a paddle. It's called. My wife says I can't say rowing, so I've been practicing it through the years, and I'm getting it out. I want to get it right this morning. I usually say roaring, but. Uh, I can just imagine got one rowing over here and he's just he's done got tired and he's taking his time and you keep in mind this boat's built out of wood it's heavy now, it's not a real big boat I, in my research what I've been able to find it's 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 about a 15 it, it's it's about 15 people is all it could handle maybe not even that many but that thing's built to withstand the weather and they're trying to handle this thing but I, as I begin to look into the scripture and I begin to think about it and just imagine these men that that uh, is is trying to power this boat and I, if you're if you're rowing a boat and you're putting a little more on the right side than you are on the left side then what's going to happen that thing's going to begin to veer off track. That thing's going to begin to, to turn to the right or it's going to begin to turn to the left wherever the most power's at. And, and as, that, as that storm gets worse, the wind gets involved in this thing and, and, and they've done a lost course. They don't know. I, now, this is Beckology. This is not theology that I'm putting in here right now. But they've done a lost course. They've done veered off. They've done got in a place that's unknown. It's dark outside and they cannot see. How many times have we been there in our life? How many times have we seen these days come by? How many times have we come to come and the storm has just literally uh, uh, t taken our side away from us and we, we couldn't see where we was going and, and boy, it just got tough and got to the place and, 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 and we just throw up our hands and say, I quit. I, I'm not doing it no more. I'm not. I'm just, I, I'm getting out of this thing. I mean, I know of preachers, Brother Doug, uh, uh, that's literally throwed their Bibles to the side uh, and said, I'm not putting up with, I'm not taking, the, I'm not taking, taking the bad mouth and no more I'm not going to do this it's not worth it uh, can I say this morning uh, through the good times and the bad times uh, I'm in my, 40, my 45th year of ministry and God has blessed uh, and God is blessed even in my stupidity in my times of failure in my times when I didn't listen to him uh, he still took care of me uh, he still walked through the storm with me uh, Peter uh, uh, is in this in in this dark time, uh, uh, the Lord uh, uh, comes out on the scene. Uh, he begins to walk on the water. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, uh, when the Lord has just sent them on their way, uh, I mean, they have literally just heard the voice of the Lord. Yet, in the middle of the storm, you see, everything was good. They just seen the greatest miracle in their lifetime take place. Everything was good. And the Lord sent them out on this journey. And all of a sudden the Lord shows up on the scene. And he he speaks to them. And they begin to wonder who is this yeah. who is this yeah. Yeah. now in the book of 1st John the Bible says try the spirits right. he wasn't talking about a whiskey bottle neither right. he said try the spirits you have to be careful when the storm arises 
Now, sometimes the Lord will move you in a time of a storm. But that's not usually the plan. Usually when the Lord begins to do something in your life, it's going to be a time when you have full understanding of what's going on. Right. And in a storm, you don't have full understanding. That's right. you, you, it's hard to listen to the Lord yeah. when you're in the storm. Right. God, God began to speak, and they didn't recognize his voice, and I still don't understand why in the world. It's less than 12 hours since they have heard his voice. Why do they not understand this is the Lord? And, and as, as the Lord uh, 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 continued, Peter looks up at him and he said, If it be thou, bid me. The Lord didn't tell him to get out of that boat and come to him. No. Peter asked him, Lord, no, I'm sorry. He said, If it be thou, bid me. The Lord told him, Come on. Yeah. You know what he done? He went from a place of safety that the Lord had put him in into an unknown place. Right. And he began to walk toward the Lord. Now, if he had kept his eyes on him, yes. he'd, have he'd have made it to him. Mm -hmm. But what happened? The storm got his eyes. Yeah. I started down this road a while ago when I veered from it. There was a... There, when, when, when the Lord... Let me get back up here and give you a scripture. In verse, in verse number 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Verse number 27, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. Now we've heard what a, what a man of faith Peter was. We've heard it preached. Peter walked on the water. We've heard it preached how that, that, that he minded the Lord. If the Lord meant for him to, to get out of that boat, Peter wouldn't have had to ask him. The Lord would have said, come here, boy. Walk on that water and come over here where I'm at. Right. But Peter said, Peter said, the first place, the first place where he doubted is right here. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou. You see, I'm not getting out of a place if I don't have 100% trust yeah. in the one that's telling me to get out of. Right. Right. I trust this man. If he told me that this building is in, is in, it, 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 it could be falling, I'm going to get out of here. If the ceiling is, is begins to move, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. If the Lord speaks to my heart, I'm going to move. But if the Lord has placed me somewhere, and I'm telling you, we've seen, we've seen some hard days of grace over the last few years. We've been through storm after storm after storm. And there's been a time or two that I wanted to pack up my family and leave. Oh, but listen. God has showed himself mighty. Amen. God has pushed us through. Yeah. He's took care of us. He's provided for us. He's yeah. provided for the church. He's provided for we 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 had a we had a mass exodus about three years ago. We lost thirty five to forty all in one week just about. They, they left. And you know what? The tithes didn't change. Yeah. The money kept coming in. And yeah. God was the same God he always was. Right. Even though the storm was going on. Troubles and trials and heartaches. I, uh, they were tough. They were, it, was, it was hard to go through the time. But I say this morning. Now, if you're in the boat the church where God has put you then just stay there I, I stay put where God's put you at uh, hey we're going to have growing pain, pains uh, this church is going to have growing pains uh, uh, as, as, uh, as the population grows uh, as the church grows uh, uh, things is going to happen uh, uh, but I say the captain of the ship uh, is still in control amen uh, I say the captain still got it uh, in the palm of his 
his hand. Yes. Hey, I, I, that's what this morning, uh, in verse number 28, the Bible tells us there, uh, uh, and Peter said, if it be thou, bid me, verse number 29, and he said, come. Can I say this morning, just after I get me a drink, verse number 22, said, get in a boat and go to the other side. Verse number 23 said he sent the multitudes away and he went to the mountain to pray. Then verse number 24, the ship began to take on the wind. Do you understand just because the storm began to pick up in verse number 24, it didn't change what verse number 22 had to say? Right, right. Hey, right. It did not change one word. The Lord had already spoken. Yeah. Yeah. He had already said, just get in the boat. And go over yonder. Yeah. I'm going to meet you over there. Right. Yep. I'll be there. Yeah. What, what better consolation is there, brother, right. than to just go ahead and ride that storm out and stay where God's told you to stay at? Right. What time did I start? My goodness, already after 12. You must have took too long getting me there. Amen. <laughs> well, what better consolation do we have in our heart in knowing yeah. that the Lord has told us to do something and he said I'll be waiting on you when you get there Amen. And, and, and I think about this and I've read your scripture I'm not going to keep running back to it this morning but when the storm picked up and things began to get rough the darkness had fell the Lord was there sure. Amen. Amen. Yes. he was there yeah. the you see them boys may not have known that there's going to be a storm, but God did. Right. Amen. Brother Cody's on preached the message. Now, I've preached the thing to death myself and probably going to preach it again one of these days. He talked about the unfolding grace of God. Mm. My goodness, how God's grace, it sees the need yeah. before we ever get to it. Right. <laughs> you may go through a death before this week's over. But the Lord knows all about it. Right. He's already got the grace, the unfolding, unmerited yeah. Yeah. grace of God already prepared yeah. for you. Yeah. It's already, it's already in place. All we got to do is just keep on doing what God told us to yeah. do. Yeah. Stay in the boat. Yeah. Keep on rowing. Yeah. Keep on doing what He's told us to do. Yeah. Verse number 31, I believe it is. I'm hurrying. And at, at verse number 30. And when, the, when, and when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. And most of the time, I got me... Uh, there's, they, 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 there's usually an altar bench here. I love the way the altars are just built in. Trying to get them to do that around grace right now. But I turn that altar bench around and I just sit down here on that altar bench and I begin to talk about how that the Lord, when we get all together and begin to row in one direction and we get all of our power moving in the, in the direction that the Lord has told us to go, it don't make no difference which way the wind's coming from. If, if my wife... Tomorrow decides that she's going to start trying to go a different direction than I do. If I will stay with God, God will take care of me. Right. But the fact is, as long as me and hers both working together, yeah. me and hers doing what we're supposed to be doing, I say this morning, you got a leader, you got a man of God, you got a man of prayer, you got a man that trusts God, church. I say this morning, get behind him. And I believe you already are behind him. But I say, get behind him even stronger. And say, say, Lord, whatever it is, whatever you want, no matter what the storm's going to be, no matter what comes, uh, uh, we're willing to ride this thing out. Uh, we're going to do what we've got to do. We're going to tell uh, uh, this town uh, of Florence, Kentucky, about the Lord. Uh, uh, we're going to do everything we can to share your gospel around the world. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, uh, while we're standing here in this place, uh, we're going to serve you. Let me wrap this thing up. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and he said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? 
I've often questioned and I'm not belittling the old man of God that's ever preached on the man of faith that Peter was. But how can you preach on this man of faith that Peter was when the Lord himself said, why did you doubt? Why did you take your eyes off of me? I don't know as Peter began to sink. I don't know if he got knee deep, ankle deep, waist deep, or if he was up to his chin. This is why that I'm not the Lord. If I'd have been the Lord, I'd have let him got down there and start sucking wind before I reached down and got him. But you know, every time I've gotten myself in trouble through the years, immediately, when I was willing to stop and say, help me, Lord, he didn't drag her down. He didn't drag her down. And I just imagine Peter probably just realized I've done messed up. I've done started to sink. Lord, would you help me? Would you get me out of this mess? How about it this morning? How many of us in this place, you don't have to raise your hand. In fact, I urge you not to raise your hand. But how many of us in this place, I fail him. He told me to do something. I backed up. I didn't stay in the boat. Things looked a little greener over yonder. I can't count the times. I can't count the times I've done it. Storms have been tough. They've wreaked havoc on my life many times. And many times I didn't see the need to stop and say, Lord, mm. the very first thing that I should have done, yeah. I didn't do. Mm. Peter, he doubted, but then he immediately knew, I better call on the one yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. that yeah. can take care of him. Dude. Maybe. Yeah. This is where the faith began to show. Yeah. This is really him. Yeah. Yeah. He'll get me out of this. Yeah. And he did. Yeah. Amen. Verse number 29, 30, maybe verse 31. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand called him and said unto him O thou of little faith the Lord got him and he picked him up got him out of that storm and set him over on the bank that's not what he done is it what did he do he put him right back where he was at He put him right back in the boat. The safest place that you can ride out a storm is in the place where the Lord puts you at. In the perfect will of God. If we just get in that place. Preacher, I ain't perfect, no. None of us will ever be until we make the crossing. But we can live in the perfect will of God. Yeah. It's available. Yeah. Yeah. It is a full option in the Christian life. Yeah. Amen. Be able to walk with Him. Right. I'm not going to give you the points this morning. I usually spend more time on my introduction than I do points, and I do have four points. But I, I'm going I'm, I'm not going to preach the points, but I'm going to give it to you. When you get discouraged, just stay with God. Stay where God puts you at. When you get disappointed, yeah. just stay where God puts you at. Yeah. When, 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 when you begin to doubt, yeah. and you will. Yeah. Hey, I told you, I, I've been in this thing 45 years, and I still have my doubts sometimes. I don't doubt him. Right. 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 I have no reason to doubt him because he showed himself true. Right. Amen. 
But discouragement will cause you to doubt. Right. Disappointment yeah. will cause you to doubt. Right. I was talking to a preacher last night and I told him, I said, I just don't understand why folks are so unfaithful to God and in turn unfaithful to the church. And I, I don't understand that. Yeah. And uh, being in the leadership of the church, in, at the church, I get discouraged. I go home sometimes wondering, Lord, why, why is it like this? Why are we doing this? I mean, I, I don't know about you, Brother Doug, but sometimes I get through preaching and, and you give, you, you, the Lord has just worked wor you to death. You give every, unload everything you got and begin to give an invitation and nobody moves. And the first thing I think, my goodness, guess I missed it. Discouragement yeah. will show up. It'll mess with your mind. It will. Cause you to doubt. Right. It'll cause you to doubt the message that you preach. Right. It'll it'll cause you to doubt what you preach, where you at, yeah. what you're doing. Right. And then that last point. Don't doubt when the devil accuses you. Because he will. And he may have it set up for you today. He will come after you with everything he's got. Amen. He does not want you to succeed in the Christian life. But he's not in control. He is. Yes, glory. Amen. He did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.